In this video, I'm going to be talking about the duration of endocrine or hormonal therapy. First, I'll talk about what it is, why we use it, the duration that most people are on, and why we recommend stopping at 10 years. This is in response to a lot of questions you've sent in. So keep those questions coming and don't forget to subscribe to this channel so that you get more content. We're always producing new content. So endocrine therapy is treatment that we use to decrease the risk of cancer coming back after one's initial treatment, which is usually surgery. And I'm talking now about people who are treated with uh, for early stage breast cancer. So non-invasive breast cancer or stages one, two, or three breast cancer. And we use hormonal therapy, also called endocrine therapy, to decrease the risk of the cancer coming back in the affected breast for people who've kept the breast, had breast conservation, and to decrease the risk of the cancer showing up later in other parts of the body. These therapies do not work if the tumor is estrogen and progesterone receptor negative. So they're used only in people whose tumor has the estrogen or progesterone receptor. And you can watch our other videos about those receptors. Those you can find on your pathology report and your medical team most likely has already gone over that with you. So these treatments that I'm talking about are adjuvant treatment. They're an adjunct to surgery. And if you've had chemotherapy or targeted therapy, they're used after you've finished your chemotherapy and can be given with targeted therapy. You can also be on endocrine therapy during radiation therapy, but if you're having a lot of hot flashes, you may want to wait uh, because that extra sweating can increase the side effects you get from radiation therapy and delaying for six weeks is not a problem. So endocrine therapy is given for people whose tumors are hormone receptor positive. We give it to decrease the risk of the cancer coming back both in the breast and elsewhere in the body. The timing is after chemotherapy and for some people after radiation therapy. We also use these drugs sometimes before surgery to shrink the tumor. That would be primary systemic endocrine therapy and after surgery you would resume the hormonal therapy. So we've done lots of studies, and we know that uh, for people who are premenopausal, uh, we can give tamoxifen. For people who are postmenopausal, their ovaries aren't working, or people whom we put their ovaries to sleep if they have ovaries, will be on aromatase inhibitors. Aromatase inhibitors do not work in the presence of functioning ovaries. That's really important to know. The duration of therapy used to be five years, and then we did clinical trials showing that longer durations are better for people at somewhat higher risk. So if your tumor was high risk enough that chemotherapy was recommended and, targeted th and or targeted therapy, even if you decided not to get chemotherapy, if your tumor was high enough risk that chemotherapy was part of the discussion or you received it, we do recommend a longer duration of endocrine therapy, so seven and a half to 10 years. And the standard that you'll hear is five to 10 years. And that's in part because of, we wanna know how you're tolerating it, and it may also depend on your risk as well as new data that we're always getting. You can go to yerba.com to learn more about your treatment options, including whether or not endocrine therapy will be part of your treatment plan. So, and not just about the benefits, but also the side effects. We really wanna get smarter about how we treat people. We don't wanna over-treat, and we also don't want to under-treat. So I just wanna make a, a side note that if your side effects are so severe and the benefit is smaller to you, talk with your medical team about discontinuing endocrine therapy or perhaps switching to a different medication. And we've covered this in other videos, but I just wanted to bring it up here. So why do we stop at 10 years? That's a question we get a lot. And the reason is because after 10 years, the benefits are now outweighed by the risks. So we've done studies with longer duration of endocrine therapy, more than 10 years. And it's at that point that we start to see more side effects than reduction in risk. 
And I'm not just talking about those really important daily side effects like sleep problems and sexual problems and hot flashes and joint pains. I'm talking about endometrial cancer if you have a uterus or problems with your bone health or cardiovascular health. And those, those downsides of endocrine therapy are out, are, those outweigh the benefits of staying on the treatment. I have had patients who have asked to stay on them longer. They were at high enough risk and we monitored their bone and their cholesterol and they were tolerating it really well. So I'm not saying for nobody would longer than 10 years be a possibility, but we have no data that one needs to be on it longer to get more benefit. So, you know, you can get, as much as you might hate your endocrine therapy, it feels really reassuring that you're doing something, but it's important that we weigh quality of life and serious adverse effects with any sort of hypothetical benefit. And after 10 years, there really is just a hypothetical benefit. We'll let you know if new data come out saying that longer is better, but 10 years is the cap right now. I hope this has been helpful for you. If you click like, that helps other people who are similar to you find this video. And again, a reminder to subscribe. Follow us on Instagram. And as always, you can go to yerba.com to get your personalized report.